So <coughs> today we like to go through the rest of the part on the basic concept that we need when we want to go to do analysis of structures. Now for the first, when we first, uh, when we want to do analysis of structures, you need analysis model. And you know what analysis model represent? Actually represent the actual structures. And you are going to have all the members that join the loading. This arrow representing the loading. This arrow is also representing loading. And also you have support. Today we start off with uh, the important parts of uh, analysis model, which is the support. The so support is necessary because the structure has to be supported, has to stay on the foundation so that the structures can be used for the purpose and it can carry the load. So the important things that you need to know as far as support is concerned is we need to know at the support what kind of movement, what kind of movement meaning that whether it is a displacement or rotation, what kind of movement is prevented and what kind of movement is not prevented, is allowed to move, whether it is allowed to move horizontally, vertically or is not allowed to move or whether it is allowed to move, whether it is about to rotate or not. So that is the important thing, that is the basic things that you have to know. Okay? And of course the support doesn't actually look like this, this is, remember this is idealization. So. We represent the actual structures in this way, so that you don't have to draw this all the time. If we have to draw this all the time, plus this little, little boy staying here with this kind of attire at the back, this kind of building, so this detailed bow here, this takes a lot of time and you have to put color here. So we do not, we do not uh, draw this, but we represent this using certain symbols. So, I think we have, I know that, we have learned that there are three basic types of support, which is a fixed type, the pin type, and the roller type. So, we start with a hinge, this is a, what we call the hinge joint at the support, and at this support, at this support here, at the hinge joint, this part, this point here cannot move in this direction, cannot move in this direction, it cannot move, but it can rotate. It can, it is allowed to, this point is allowed to rotate. As you can. So, so this, what is allowed, what is not allowed, the pin joint we need to know, is not allowed to move in two directions, horizontally and vertically. And this is how it actually looks like. And a fixed support, as a type, the common type is a fixed support, fixed support is, as this is example, this is a foot bridge. If you pay attention to the support, of a footbridge when you want to cross a way, cross a road, or cross a highway for people to pedestrian crossing. And this is one of the columns supporting. So you can see here, this is an example of fixed support, how it actually looks like. So at the fixed support, it is not allowed to move. It is not allowed to move horizontally, not allowed to move this direction, this direction, and this direction also vertically. At the same time, this point cannot rotate. It cannot rotate. Which means this is fixed here. At that particular point, it cannot rotate, meaning that the, the column will not go like this. At that particular point, it's not allowed to rotate because you fixed that. It cannot move like this, it cannot move like this. Also, this particular point cannot rotate. So that is a fixed support. And the third type is, this one might be a little bit roller support. Roller support this typically we can find the bridge support. This is on top, this is a bridge crossing a river. So you can see something like a cylinder here. These are put here so that this is allowed to slide. It is allowed to, to slide in certain directions. In the direction of the roller is allowed to slide. So that's why this roller is there, it's allowed to slide, but it cannot move up and down. It cannot move up and down. Is not it can slide, it cannot move up and down because this is this thing is holding this thing 
to this support here so it cannot move up and down but it can slide and it can rotate this point is allowed to rotate right but of course sliding the sliding the amount of sliding is limited this bridge cannot be allowed to slide to, to slide as much as as much as the bridge slides because the sliding it is allowed to slide but there's a limit there and they fix a limit the limit is fixed there so there's only a certain amount let's say 300 mm or 200 mm is allowed to slide as a maximum but it is allowed to slide it's not allowed to move up and down it's allowed to rotate and this is another example so if you look at this what do you think this support is pin fix or roller pin this is very easily to tell this looks like a pin that you have a very big rod here passing through this cannot move cannot move like this but it can rotate this is also the same thing what about this what about this what do you say pin any other pin hinge This one, typically, if you go, if you have a chance to undergo underneath the bridge, you look at the support there. Sometimes, most of, sometimes you can see this this kind of support. This is the bridge support under the bridge. Okay. So this is you can see this is actually a kind of roller support because this is a roller support. You see this particular groove here. This particular groove. So this groove is extending from here to the other ends so it allows it allows the bridge it allows the bridge to to have certain movement in the direction of that groove which means it can slide there it can slide so this is a groove which is allowing allowing the bridge support to slide and of course the bridge cannot go up and down or else the bridge will be jumping the bridge cannot go up and down but certain amount of rotation is allowed there so this is actually a kind of roller support uh, it can move here so, so this is actually how it looks like so those are the basic things that you have learned and the most important thing that you have to know of these three basic type is when you talk about pin not allowed to move horizontally vertically when you not talk, not talk about roller one direction is allowed to move but both pin and roller is allowed to rotate and the fixed on the fixed support not allowed to move horizontally vertically and not allowed to rotate okay, so those are the main thing that you need to know because if you get it wrong so your free body diagram will be, will be wrong your equilibrium equation will be wrong and your reaction forces will be wrong and I will make mistake in your marks so your marks also will be wrong I also so the consequence is very severe okay so don't make this basic mistake if you make mistakes still in the calculations when you are studying here it's okay but imagine you make mistake when you are doing actual engineering design yeah, there's supposed to be a moment then somehow we forget about the moment then you get all the reaction forces wrong okay? so it is very important these basic things this basic thing is the one that uh, make us able to check whether the design is correct, whether all the calculation is done properly. And uh, one of the most important thing is when a certain point is not allowed to move, then you have reaction forces. When certain point, when this point, if you put something here, when it cannot move, then there will be what is preventing it from moving because there is a reaction force there. So reaction force will happen when something is not allowed to move. So like what we've shown here, this is a fixed support. So because it cannot move in this direction, so you have this reaction force. It cannot move up and down, you have this reaction force. It cannot rotate at this point, you have moment. So this is the important thing that you have to relate. This support have three reaction forces, three. Sometimes, uh, uh, over the years, sometimes students forget about this. This is okay, but forget about this moment. So when you forget about this moment, your free body diagram is not correct. 
equilibrium equation is wrong because you forget to include this. So this is the most important thing. Reaction forces, how many are there? And this is important for you to draw free body diagram correctly. So free body diagram, as we have seen, it is also another basic thing. Free body diagram showing only the diagram of whatever parts that you want to draw without the actual support, but you represent the support with forces. So you don't see any support here, but you represent that as, as actually there's a support here with reaction forces. And how many are there? You have to draw correct. And free body diagram, FBD, we use FBD, is very, very useful. A, you are going to use it. 253, 254, 353, 354, 455, 555, 655, whatever, 5, whatever EAS that you are going to do. So, for example, somebody passing through here, I don't very worry about this. How come it can stand? This is uh, many years ago, I think, taken from photo, a newspaper. And uh, I think this is not supposed to leave it like this. But the engineer is very confident it, it will not fall down. So, so, if you ask how would be the simple free, bo for free body diagram checking to see whether it is okay. Uh, this is actually curved and you have a support here and you have actually some tie, tie cable here. Uh, pulling it, uh, stabilizing it, this cable pulling it down. So how would a, a free body diagram look like? So we will simplify, simplify this diagram, let's assume that it is not curved. Uh, assume that this is not curved, this is curved, yeah? So we, we, let's say we assume that this is straight and there's a support here, so what kind of support do you think it is? And then there is a, there is a, like a cable rod pulling it down. So if you want to draw the free body diagram of this part only, of this back part, which is a box, box type girder. Uh, this is a box girder, where there are pipes going inside. So how would the free body diagram look like? So you just imagine, and then when I change to the next slide, please com compare your imagination or your answer with the one that I'm going to show you next. What is the free body diagram looks like for this part? Uh, don't, we don't talk about this. This is column supporting this. For this part, what with the free body diagram? Remember, this is, uh, this is, um, this is like a beam. Yeah? But this is a box beam. And this box beam has self-weight. It has its own weight, so we need to represent that weight. So are you ready? We are going to switch up the light and put it in. So this is, of course, a very simplified one. We assume that it is straight. Assume this is straight, and then this is one representing these, and you have this representing the self weight. Self weight. Self weight of this. Of course, we have to know what is the self weight of this, and we have this one. Remember, we want to only draw a free body diagram of this. So we this one representing the rod, which is being tied there. Okay, for this are rod, there are, so there are forces acting on this part. And this, this two black arrow and this horizontal one representing the support. So we assume this is like a kind of pin, a uh, pin support there. And we assume that we don't know how many are there, so we cannot see there are two support there. Two supporting this, so there are two from there. And of course, you must, you must not allow this to slide. If this slide, then it jump from this side to the other side. Okay, so it must not allow this to slide, so you prevent this point from moving, so there is a horizontal force representing by this horizontal arrow. Okay, and then after you draw this, roughly, then you can estimate what should be the forces required here to make this balance. What is the forces required to make this balance? What will be the forces acting on top coming from these two, acting on the support there. You cannot see here. There's a support between these and this. There's a support there. This do not sit directly on this. There's a support there. Okay. So what will be the forces acting at that support? So you can estimate. So you can estimate. Okay. So if you want to check whether this is balanced enough, so if a bird standing here, is it going to suddenly there's a bird want to stand here, enjoy the view? So what happened? So then you have to ask another bird, please stand here also to make it balance. So free body diagram. Okay. Oh, finished.
end of slideshow, click to end. So, so this is basic concept. Remember, free body diagram is very helpful, and then you are going to need that for the rest of these courses and actually when you work. Yeah? We want to also look at another concept which is uh, important for you to know that the, the concept of what we call planar problems. What you are going to solve 253, 254, they are all planar problems or 2D problems. So what is the meaning of that? Why we consider it as 2D problems and what is the actual relation of it to the actual structure that we want to solve. So this is another, another aspect of structural idealization. So you should know what is structural idealization. You represent the actual structure using a diagram that we call analysis model. So we look at now planar problems. Actually, you have been solving that. When you are doing ES152 also, you are solving planar problems. So, Remember, actual structures, there are actual structures, there are 3D objects, meaning that they have width, they have width in another direction, and they have height. This is the actual structures. Example is this and this. You know where is this? This is construction site. Oh, okay. So, this is also, this is already completed structures. This is actually the, how it looks like. You know our Paribunta clock tower at the corner there. You have Chakoi Tiao and then you have all this up top there. They are going to have like a museum. This is how it looked like during constructions. Okay. I know that it's going to be like that one day. So I took photo of this many years ago so that I can show you. So this photo is very expensive now. Very expensive. This is, it can be used as to show sejarah perkembangan paribunta around the clock tower. Okay. And I show only to you. Okay. Don't tell anybody it looks like this. Okay. So, what I want to emphasize here is that structures, remember, they are all 3D. It has width in this direction, width in another direction, and also height. Okay. But when we do analysis, not all the time we need to consider all 3D aspect because when we analyze them, we get accurate results. Okay? Because of the way the load is being applied, because of the way the structures are being, the members are being arranged. So, for this kind of, we, we see that there are columns in this direction, there are also columns in the other directions, and there are beam in this direction, there are beam in this direction. So, depending on the situations, how the members are being arranged, do they arrange in a particular plane? What we've shown here. So, you can first, you can represent the whole thing. If you want to do, nowadays computers can represent the whole thing very easily, so we can represent the whole thing. But remember I told you, computer result only gives you result correctly if you model correctly. What happened? There is a power failure or battery. No battery. The battery is already only very one small, all thing black now. So no battery, no computer. So cannot analyze using computer. So what to do? And you have to simplify. You have to simplify. And as engineer, we must simplify it with correct assumption. Okay. So we can just take out this part and then analyze it. Or take out this part, analyze. So this is what we call plane problems. So everything lies in a plane. Everything lies in a plane. The members, if taking this as X, Y plane, so all the columns stay like in this orientation, all the beams stay in this orientation, including the loading. So the loading consider only X within that plane, like this, like this. And we cannot consider loading acting like this. So if there is no loading acting like this that we should consider for this case and all the loading, mainly the important one, the, the one that is significant one, is only acting in this plane, then we can represent these whole structures separately by this and this. 
So that is, when we go from this to this, the actual one to this only, which is staying in one plane, we call it a plane problem or a 2D problem. Okay. So what you are going to solve now on 2, 5, 3, 2, 5, 4, they are all planar problems. And very often in design also, you try to simplify it now as, as much as you can into 2D problems because it is the analysis will be simpler and easy for you to check. Okay? So, so this is what we mean by plane. So all the beams that you are going to analyze, they are all actually 2D problems. Uh, now the frame that you are going to analyze, they are 2D problem, and the thrust that Dr. Taxia will take over, they are also also 2D problem. Thrust, arch, they are all 2D. Meaning that so this is actually a uh, uh, a trusses supporting a roof. So you have this one, two, three, four trusses. They are all together with this member here. Yeah, together with this member, this member, this member, they form a 3D structures. But when we do analysis, these are trusses. When you go, now when you go to, when you pass through any structures, please try to look, look up and you can see those trusses. Like our construction site now on the way Next to when you go back to the hostel, the construction site, you can see something that looks like this metallic color. There are trusses. So we can represent this if you want to analyze this, 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 uh, all the horizontal members which is connecting this truss to the other. You can using computer. This can be easily done. Okay. But if you can simplify, you should always simplify because you can just take out one of these. Take out one of these and you analyze, you compare with this, you might not get, you will get more or less the same result with the same accuracy. You might get a little bit difference. So if you can do this, then if you can simplify it to 2D structure analysis, it's much more simpler, it, lacks, it takes less amount of time and you can also do easy checking. So this is another example of 2D problems. The actual one, this does not act alone, okay, this one it has to act together with other groups so that it can function. But for analysis, you can take out one of these, analyze, and find out the forces, design, and then you can use the design to all the trusses. So this is another example of 2D, but remember this is part of this. This is part of the, the whole roof structure. So this is plane thrust, okay? Plane thrust, plane frame. So plane means they stay in one one plane, one plane. It can be X Y plane, even the X Z plane, uh, depending. In many instances, 3D analysis model can be further simplified. And for engineering analysis, we do this simplification a lot because we need uh, <coughs> valid assumption so that we can do easy calculation, which is accurate enough with valid justification, depending on the arrangement of structural members and the loading. Loading. If the loading really 3D, uh, if the loading is really a 3D loading, so we have to do, we cannot use 2D problems, we have to use 3D problems. Such analysis problem can be analyzed more easily and more importantly, when you do fast checking, you, do, you need this kind of thing to help you to do very fast checking. So that is where this simplification will be very helpful. And they are called 2D problems or planar problems because they stay in one plane. 253 and 254 in the next semester deal only with planar problems. Okay. So this is another concept that when you come across textbook or books that talks about planar problems, so that is the meaning. So all the structures, all the members lie, assumed to lie in one plane, all the loading also. And it is assumed that these structures, it, it will not move. This structure will stay in that plane, so there is no movement out of plane. Any movement is only within that plane. The loading also. So the loading like this cannot be considered. It has to be everything within that plane. Loading in this way, loading like this. So, <coughs> that is playing a problem. Okay. In planar problem, all members and applied loads and reaction forces lie in the same plane. Okay. It's lie in XY plane. 
all movements in the direction perpendicular to the plane are restrained. So all movement perpendicular to this restraint. If your struck, this is your plane. If this is a plane, all movement perpendicular is assumed to be restrained. Okay. So if you are asked what is a planar problem, if you go, if you happen to read books and then read articles, what is a planar problem in structural analysis problem, this is the meaning. But I would like to, uh, to emphasize the structures are actually 3D, okay? This is idealizations. So now we want to just uh, go through the symbol that we normally use. In analysis model, as I mentioned, we use symbol. We use line diagram only to represent the actual structures, the support. So this you are familiar with. This is a symbol that we normally use for pin connections. Sometimes we use a, a circle here and then connect to one line as a pin. Or sometimes we use a triangle sitting on the support. So this is a pin. This is roller. This is roller. You can draw two tire or three or four, but don't draw too many. I think two is enough, but at least two. You don't draw one, one, one. If you draw one, then what happens? It's not balanced. If you only one, then it go like this. It can go like that. So at least two is enough. Okay. Fixed rigid connection. This is a this is a symbol that we use. Okay, so. We agree that this is a symbol that we normally use, but some books, they use a slight different... Sometimes uh, you can use also, you can see also roller support. They draw this without this tire, like floating. So that is another symbol. So <coughs> when you talk about support, this is another symbol for pin support. Put a, a circle here and then connect with members so it represents pin support. So uh, again, at the beginning of the class, I mentioned the most important thing when you talk about support, actually join later on, is we need to know at the support what kind of movement. In, in this case, movement means translations. Translation means, translation means uh, you use Google, you put in Bahasa Malaysia, uh, translation. I don't know, you put in English, translation, you press, you want to change to one language. Russian, and it came out. That is translation. Oh. Okay. Everybody, not everybody is smiling, means everybody is thinking, what kind of joke is this? <laughs> so, as you, as you go along, sometimes you feel like, when you first, first teach, start teaching, you, when you think about history, you go back many years ago. When you first talk about that, at that time, I was teaching one class, 400 students. This is uh, history. You haven't finished that thing sentence, already start laughing. Okay. Now that you finish, after one minute or so, no response. <laughs> then sometimes you don't know how the feeling here, you feel very embarrassed. Thing. <laughs> feel very, it's, very, it's a bit hot here, then this is... But, you still have to continue, you still have to teach, so, so you have to recover very fast. Or else you are going to lose the rest of the time of the lectures. So next time maybe you don't talk too much, so just concentrate. Okay. So translation. In translation, in theory of structures, we are talking about a movement. Yeah, translation, it can this point move to the other point, can this point move up or down, or move here if a 3D problem, so that is translations, or rotations. Can this particular point rotate relative to the original? Yeah? If the original like this, can this particular point rotate so that it becomes like this? Eh? So that is rotations. So movement means either translation or rotation. So uh, there's another one which is twisting, but we do not consider twisting here. So which, what kind of movement is allowed, what is not allowed, is the things that you must associate correctly. Okay. So this one we have seen, you have two reaction forces. Pin, always two, okay? In beam, many times this is zero, but remember in pin, always there are two. 
because translation in two direction is not allowed. R and H, horizontal and this is vertical. In uh, fixed support, <coughs> additional, because rotation is not allowed. When rotation is not allowed, you have moment M. So remember that. When translation is not allowed, you have reaction force. When rotation is not allowed, you have moment. When twisting is not allowed, you have... Remember, Dr. Lau, when twisting is not allowed, what is that? Torsion. You have torsional moment. When twisting is not allowed, you must have torsional moment to prevent twisting. Okay. So, this is supposed to ask you, already come up with the answer. This is how many? Two. Remember, two. Roller, one only. Fix, three. So this is the winner. It has three. This has one only. This is two. One, two, three. This is basic. Don't make mistake. Don't break my heart when I mark the test. Forget to put this. Okay. And remember, where is the reaction forces in this case? This is allowed to move in this direction, so no reaction force. This means not allowed to move up and down, so reaction force happens in this direction. So not in this direction, because it is allowed to move. So this is a basic thing, remember. <coughs> Don't make mistakes, this is a very basic thing. So I show you again uh, <coughs> roller support. And roller support, it can, you can, the orientation of the support, the support, the supporting plane, yeah? this is the supporting plane. Supporting plane means uh, if you have this, so this is connected to this support, so this is a supporting plane. So this is not necessarily horizontal, it can be vertical, it can also be inclined, okay? So, Whatever horizontal, vertical, incline, then if a roller support means there is only one direction that it is restrained, only one translation. In this case, this one represents allowed. This is not allowed. Okay? So not allowed to move like this. That's why not allowed to move this. This does not mean moment. Okay? This means allowed to rotate, allowed to move like this. This one means, the blue one means not allowed. So not allowed to move in this way. Here, another symbol is like this, some like this, so depending on the books. And you, have, you can also have this supporting plane vertical. So in this case, the movement which is perpendicular to the supporting plane is not allowed, which is this direction not allowed now, not this. When this one becomes vertical roller support, this is horizontal roller support, this is Incline roller support. Incline, in this case, this direction is not allowed to move, so you have reaction force like this. This is allowed to move, allowed to rotate. Okay, so remember, roller support can be horizontal, roller can be vertical, can be inclined. So whatever it is, there is only one direction, one translation which is not allowed. The rest of the translation, this is, and the rotation is allow. So, how many reaction force is going to have here? Only, only one. And make sure the direction is correctly indicated. The direction is perpendicular. The reaction force is perpendicular to the plane of the support. This is the plane of the support. So, you have reaction force, reaction force, reaction force, reaction force horizontally now, reaction force inclined now. Roller support, uh, so there is a, this is the reactions, okay? This is the reaction that will happen if you look like this. This means uh, movement allowed, movement allowed, movement not allowed. So you have reaction force, reaction force, reaction force, reaction force, reaction force. For pin, so we go to pin. Pin is uh, the restraint is higher than a roller because you have two direction translation not allowed now. This one not allowed, not allowed, rotation allowed. The same thing here. And remember, you can also have vertical pin support, incline pin support. So this is not allowed now, not allowed, allowed. Rotation allowed. 
So the corresponding reaction forces like this, like this, like this, and like this. Okay. So the relation with the restraint and the reaction forces. When some movement is, when translation is prevented, you have reaction forces. Prevented horizontally, you have horizontal reaction force. Prevented to move vertically, you have vertical reaction force. So the last, the third type, which is uh, the one that you need to know, is a fixed support. So fixed, everything not allowed. Translation not allowed, rotation not allowed. Fully restrained. And that's why reaction forces, which is different from roller and pin, different from pin, you have moment. You have moment. And don't forget, fixed support, there is moment. Okay. So this is uh, just to show you uh, some, if you try to show it more rea realistically, if you pay attention to steel structure, sometimes this is a I, <coughs> this is a H, this is H section, this is I section, these are steel, typically steel structures. And uh, if you do connection like this, this is very small in comparison with this, so we consider this as a pin. It cannot take moment effectively. So this is how it looks like. If you look it from here, it looks like this. This is how it more realistic. This is roller support. Sometimes we put uh, what I showed to you in the beginning of the lecture, some kind of like a rod. You can put underneath this. So this, this is to achieve, allow this to move horizontally. So this is a roller support and this, this, this thing and this thing they are not allowed, they are not, not allowed to separate. Which means this point cannot move up, or this point cannot move up and down relative to this. So that is a kind of <coughs> more realistically a roller support. And uh, if, just now, if you look at this, uh, if you put this, and on top of this, you welded one plate here, one put one plate here, well there, well there. So this one, this support, become now a fixed support instead of a pin support, because of this and this, you welding, welding there, so this is able to take moment. So rotation is, the relative rotation is restricted now, so it becomes a fixed support. And this is concrete. Normally, if you look at uh, constructions, if there's a beam, there's a column connected, so normally that connections are, we consider as a fixed support or fixed. So these are to show it more realistically. And if you go to KL, I think these are the one of in one of the station, the uh, M, the RRT or MRT, not RRT. Eh? Uh, you see this. So these are the connections. So you you can consider this. What do you consider this? A pin or roller or pin? Okay. So this can be considered as pin. So here. And this one? Pin or fix or fix or rigid? Pin. Any 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 other answer? Pin? Fix? What else? Roller cannot be. This cannot be roller. Okay? If you roller then you, you walk out the RRT, you, you see okay. when the train is coming then you see the, the station move. When the train is coming the other direction, station will move the other direction. So train come here, train like that, balance. So this one is actually, what I want to bring out is, in the actual construction, you, you, don't, get, you don't get pure pin or pure fix. It is in between. In between. But we can tell it is closer to pin or closer to fix. Okay, so if it is closer to pin, we idealize as pin. If it's closer to fix, we must be sure that because fix, remember, there's a moment there. So if very close to fix and able to take, able to take moment effectively, we can consider as a fix. So this is close. This is uh, not actually pin because it's one, two, three. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is a lot of both there. So this is actually, it is between pin and fix. It's quite close to fix, but not actually fix. So this is the actual case. <coughs> so what do you do in that case? So you have to, sometimes you have to do some kind of analysis. If you consider as pin, you consider as fixed. 
So what is the effect on the load? So you take the most severe case. Okay. So sometimes it's easy for us to tell this is very close to pin, but sometimes they are actually in between. This is just no ideal one. And this one is one you can consider. Uh, this one, what do you think? Fixed or pin. So this beam is connected to this beam by this thing, so we can idealize it as a fixed. Fix. This is quite obvious. This is fixed, very close to fixed. Because this is, uh, when it comes here, especially very big here, so all the restraint is very high. So you can consider it as fixed. And also, this is, uh, this is a stadium. So this connection, this is, this is 3D now. Okay? This is actually a 3D because all the members cannot be considered lie in one plane only. So this, is, this one we have to analyze as a 3D. This is out of the scope, but I just want to show this are the example of connection that we can consider. If you are design, if you are asked to design this, analyze this, you consider as pin of fixed L roller? Fixed. Okay. Anybody else? Fixed. Everybody agree fixed? Okay. So this is actually, uh, if you go to, this is, an, this is a curve, yeah? This is curve. So this is, normally we analyze this. This is one support, another support. This become two pin arch. This is like an arch. So we consider this as a pin. Okay? But uh, it, is, it is not a really, really pin, but this is closer to pin. Okay? Because relatively this compared to this, this is rather small. So that's why we consider this as pin. But if this is rather big size compared to this, and because of this plate connected to this, you're right, you can consider this as a fix. But this is actually an example of an arch which is pinned at both sides. One side here, the other side. Okay. And the support also can be very big. This is one offshore structures when oil rig. So they have to transport this separately, this one, the whole thing being transported there and then connect there. So this is actually connections. Okay. So this become a connections because you cannot construct this in one piece. This one you construct in one piece, you bring it there. This one you construct first and then you leave and you put them together, then you have the oil platform. Okay. So it can be very big. Uh, this one? <coughs> what kind of pin? This is very obvious, this is pin. This is part of the bridge connection. This is on top there. So this one later on, this is one of the structures that you learn three pin arch. One pin at the support port and the top part there's a pin here. This is three pin arch. Okay, so that is a, a, a kind of a to, <coughs> to review again and to make sure that you get all these things right. Okay? We have pin support, roller support and fixed support. And uh, what kind of restraint is, what kind of restraint exists at the pin support, fixed support, and roller support? Okay. And as a consequence, when something is not allowed to move, translation not allowed, you have reaction forces. Rotation not allowed, you have moment. So please get that correct. Okay. And uh, also, <coughs> we have also seen connections. We have also seen <coughs> connections. So this is a kind of connections between two members. When we look at connections, so it is also important for us to know at the particular connections, at the particular joint between two members, what kind of forces that will happen at that connections. So that is the next slide that, <coughs> okay, now, in the last few slides I'm going to show. <coughs> now, this is actually especially important when you want to calculate bending moment shear force. Okay? Because uh, this bending, bending moment and shear force, uh, where do they happen? Bending moment and shear force, axial force. Can you see bending moment? Can you see bending moment? Thank you. Put on special glass, bending moment glass and you can see. Bending moment spectacle, then you can see bending moment or shear. Can you see bending moment, shear force? Can you? 
Can you, can you see, for example, oh, bending moment is there. Oh, shear force is there. Axial force is there. The color is red. Can you see? <coughs> can you see load? Load. The arrow that I show you many times. Can you see the load? You, I apply here, you cannot see arrow, but you only see if there is a truck passing by. So you see truck, you don't see load. But load comes from the truck and we represent that using arrow. So that is something that is acting on the structures. And as a result, you have internal forces. So shear force, bending moment, axial force happen inside a member. This is internal and you, you cannot see them. But in ES253, I will make you see them okay. by making, when you want to see bending moment shear force, what do you do? In, what do you do? Draw. draw. Okay, you draw. But you draw a diagram, the many moments shear force. But when you want to calculate, remember, what do you do? Uh, based on the load. Okay. Okay. Based on the load. But when you want to make them appear in the diagram, what do you do? Huh? Analyze. analyze it. Okay. You analyze it. Okay. But when you want to analyze it, you draw a diagram, right? You have to draw, analyze, and then what else? Draw. draw. You have to cut it. You remember you cut it. Why do you cut it? Yes, you, you cut the why do you cut it? Because if you don't cut it, the bending moment shear force, actual force, they do not appear. What you see when you draw, you don't cut, you see loading. Loading, distributed load, point load, reaction force, because those are the forces acting on the structures. Shear force, bending moment, and actual force, they are internal, happen inside. So when you do analysis, when you want to see them, you have to cut it. Okay? And when you cut it, then in your diagram, that things appear. Then you do analysis. Then you find out the bending moment and shear force. Then you draw. So that is cut. So, when you cut it, how many forces are there? That is the thing that you need to know. Okay? This is for the next few slides before I finish, and I would like to show you. So, it's important to know what forces will occur at connections. At the same time, previously, what forces will occur at the, re at the support. Okay? Now we look at the connection between two members, or, men or on member section. This is shear force. The internal forces happen on member sections and that is in engineering in analysis we can visualize them if you cut it <coughs> so this uh, this is part of the support this is one member connected to the other member by a pin connection now we are talking not pin support now support is we go to foundations now we are talking about connections so now at this pin connections, when you want to do analysis, if you want to see what kind of forces will appear in this member close to the, at the connection there, so that is the point that I want to stress is you have to cut. If you don't cut, you don't see. That's why I tell you I want to make you see by cutting. So next time, please bring scissors to ES253 or you can bring whatever things I can cut. Okay? But in ES253 we cut it in something which is which is very very advanced. We have virtual cutting. No need scissor. Only using your mind and then you cut it and you get this. Okay. So when you cut this you cut here, cut here, this is cutting very close to the uh, connection there, okay? So you get these three diagrams. Okay. At a pin connection, at a pin connection, when you cut it, there is only on that cut section, there are only two forces. There is no moment, because at a pin, 
a pin cannot take a moment. Once there's a moment, the pin is going to move, rotate relative to each other. And we indicate here one like this, one like this. The directions I'm going to explain further, you can indicate like this, like this, or you can indicate in other direction. But the important thing, there are only two forces, no moment. And the fixed one, <coughs> fixed, you cut like this. So fixed, as, as a fixed connection or a rigid connection, you have two forces and moment. So this is <coughs> the what happened when you cut through a fixed connections. Connections. Okay. Three. One, two, three. This is one, two. Plus this extra moment. Which does not, you can have it like this or this one. You can also, you don't like this direction like this, horizontal vertical, you make it like this. It's also okay. But we make it perpendicular. You, you choose two perpendicular directions. So this is your shear force. This is your axial force. This is the, what is this? Huh? What? Bending moment. This is the bending moment. Okay. So that's why in the beam you have shear force, you have bending moment. But in this 253, you learn in frame there is shear force, bending moment, and this axial force, which does not normally appear in beam. Okay. How many reaction force? Reaction force? Six. How many here? Nine. How many here? Reaction force. Reaction. How many? Reaction is at the support. How many? <coughs> it's still nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is a this is a in the member connecting, so it does not affect. Okay, but it will affect your calculations because you have extra thing. But reaction force is still nine. Okay, reaction force at the support there. How many now? Five. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many? Seven. Here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this does not appear, this does not affect, because of this you reduce, this does not happen. Okay? Reaction for only depends on the type of support. Okay? But we will see when I meet you again next week, what happens when you introduce this, it affects your calculations. Okay, so that's the end of uh, lectures today. And